again, the number one reason I needed a spinal fusion when I got it was because I... Now, friends, one of the biggest questions that I am most frequently asked is, why did I need a spinal fusion? And then that comes with a host of other follow-up questions. How long did I put it off for? How long have I needed one? Did I follow other options? What were my other options? I mean, there's a host of other things that surrounds the number one reason why I specifically needed a spinal fusion and why I didn't have any other options by the time I got to that point. Now, let me preface this with, of course, this is very individual. This situation, what we go through is completely individual. So while there may be a lot of people who have a similar surgery, in theory, once the doctor gets in there, once the surgeon cuts you open, there's so many variables and so many other factors involved. Now for me, my initial injury came 18 years ago when I blew out my L5S1 completely. I mean, just, just straight out the side of my spine. The disc blew out from between my vertebrae and my vertebrae went pop and they landed on each other. And from that point on, I was bone on bone for 18 years. Now, there are some other theories that surrounded how that potentially happened to me, why that occurred. Uh, when I was younger, I had some spinal issues. I had a surgery. I had GI issues, and this is when I was a baby. Then in my teenage years, I got very sick, and they thought I had spinal meningitis. So I was given a handful of spinal taps. And if you guys know, that spinal tap needle is like yay long, and the technician couldn't get the spinal fluid out of my spine. So they continued to make, make follow-up attempts, which knowing what I know now later, I'm thinking to myself, who could have allowed this to happen? Whoever goes in for a spinal tap, you get the right person for the job. Not somebody who's like trying out new methods or first day on the job. And I think I got the first day on the job guy because he couldn't get the spinal fluid out of my spine. And where was he attempting to draw spinal fluid from? L5-S1. Where did I blow a disc? L5-S1. So that could have weakened that area. When they puncture the disc, spinal fluid slowly starts to leak out of the disc. That weakens the disc, that weakens the area. It also dries out the disc over time. It also starts to compress the vertebrae together because the disc in between the vertebrae is slowly losing space. So you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of problems that could have happened there. So that could be why I ended up having the injury I had that blew out my disc. Now, following that injury, I still needed to support my family. I was in the entertainment industry at the time. I was an actor, model, and musician. I was a performing artist. I would do crazy things with my guitar, throw it over my back, and I kept this guitar down low, and uh, you know what I mean? It wasn't the best thing for my body. So when I got married, I married into a son. So right away, I wanted to provide a good living for my then, at the time, new wife and my new son. So I went into something that I know very well, which is real estate. So I grew up doing real estate. I learned the real estate game very early on from my parents. And my grandfather was a very successful builder out in New Jersey. So I went back to something I knew very well, which was real estate and construction. I started setting tile. Bad idea. But where I was living in California at the time, it was a way for me to make good money and make money right away. Because when I was in the music industry, I, I didn't have consistent paychecks. Money came in, money went out. And you try to do the best that you can by having other sources of income, which I did. I had been flipping houses since I was 19 on my own and flipping houses with my parents early on. And I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been business minded and I've been building brands since I was a teenager in high school. So I went back to building brands. I started an automotive shop. I started a body shop. I started a custom motorcycle shop. And then eventually I started Chip Chop and Grind, my award-winning tree and landscape service. And then to go along with Chip Chop and Grind, I started Build, Guild, and Refine, which was my custom renovations company. And then I went back into full property maintenance and flipping houses at the same time. I also started climbing trees again as an arborist swinging a sledgehammer, doing construction and demo, and my back just deteriorated. But I kept going because I was just too deep into that already. And by that time, I had many kids. I have a total of six kids now, and I wanted to provide a certain lifestyle for them. I never wanted them to have to worry about money. Uh, I grew up poor. I didn't want my kids to ever grow up needing things. 
But unfortunately, a few years later, I would suffer a brain injury. I got cracked in the skull by one of my dump trucks. The Mason body tailgate broke off the hinges and cracked my skull, bruised my brain. Fortunately, before that, I had a season of plenty and we did very well and set a lot of money aside. That got me through my brain injury and kept me from having to file bankruptcy. And there was a lot involved. And eventually, my spine just kept going backwards. And my back started to get worse. And my legs started to get worse. And everything started to get worse. Now, throughout this time, for over 25 years, I've been bodybuilding. And for over 20 years, I've been coaching bodybuilders, training and mentoring recovering addicts, and teaching a lot of different people trade skills. I had a program with my companies where we would take a recovering addict or somebody just coming out of prison and I would teach them a trade so that they could support themselves and their family. And that was something that I was very passionate about. So coaching has always been one of my greatest passions and really one of the, 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 the main purposes that I feel God has placed me on this earth to do. And so obviously during this time, I was in a lot of pain. I mean, I was living in a lot of pain from day to day. Now I've discussed how I've maintained my pain in different videos, but especially my Kratom 101 video, I discuss what got me started on Kratom, which changed my life and was a huge blessing. It gave me my life back that I was losing to constant daily chronic severe pain. But by then my back was shot, my legs were in such bad condition, my sciatic nerves were constantly going out, and I had so much pressure in my legs all the way down from my back, my hips, my, my knees, my feet. And of course I'm still climbing trees and um, constantly opening and closing my vertebrae with no disc in there. But over time, my vertebrae started chipping off each other and I had chips of bone floating around my back embedding themselves into my sciatic nerves coming off of my spine. That is really what I've felt the most. Those pieces of bone, those particles of bone, I can't even explain the pain. It was so sharp and severe and acute right in my lower back that there were days I just, I just couldn't move. I wanted to just give up, but I never did but I couldn't move. And so obviously I lived my life on ibuprofen and Tylenol and caffeine. And then that stopped working. So then I had to switch over to stronger things like Oxy and Dilaudid and different narcotics and Tramadol and muscle relaxers to release the pressure and, and gabapentin for nerve pain. And it just became a terrible cycle until the day that I found Kratom. Now, Kratom changed everything for me, but I eventually needed the spinal fusion. I had to have the spinal fusion. Now, there's a lot of speculation that could happen as far as what could have helped my back. Could I have potentially avoided a spinal fusion? I don't think so because, again, the chips of bone got to the point where it was just so severe and they were all over the place embedding in all my nerves, and I was in so much pain all the time. So that is the number one reason that I needed a spinal fusion. I needed to have those particles of bone removed from the area. Now, I only had a single level spinal fusion, so it should have been about an inch scar, but it's not. It's about a six inch scar because my surgeon continued to go up and even down a little further to clean me out and to get rid of potential ongoing issues or future issues. And I'm very grateful for that because I really feel like he did what he could while he was in there. Whereas I think that many other surgeons would have been like, well, you know, let's avoid, let's just do what we have to do. Let's, let's do what we're here to do. Let's avoid the other stuff and, and he'll have to come back. Well, eventually I'm probably going to have to go back anyway because of the scar tissue building up and because of the lack of function and, and feeling in my legs and everything else. So again, the number one reason I needed a spinal fusion when I got it was because I had so many particles of bone and disc floating around. And so I had to have all that removed, but my vertebrae had nothing in between them. So my only option was to have the vertebrae opened up, have a cage installed and have my spine fused. I had gone through rounds of cortisone shots, that didn't work. 
In fact, the last cortisone shot that I had received, the doctor sh put the shot right into my sciatic nerve down my right leg. Is that why I have constant sciatica now and loss of feeling in my right leg? Who knows? I mean, at this point, it's like there's so many variables. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But what I would suggest to each and every one of you is to go through as many life changes as you possibly can to avoid surgery. My mother had three spinal fusions. And then eventually she had a neurotransmitter installed. So she had a lot of spinal issues. So I grew up seeing what happened to her after each spinal fusion. And I thought to myself, man, that's, that's a terrible way to live. And now here I am. Living that terrible way to live. And it is terrible. But at the same time, friends, it could be worse. And each of us has to continue to tell ourselves that it could be worse. And I know that no matter where you are, it could still be worse, right? Sometimes we may each feel like, no, this is as bad as it could get. And sometimes between the mental and the physical and the emotional battle, and even the spiritual battle, sometimes, no, it is about as bad as it could get. And I feel you there. Trust me. I feel you there. And on top of the physical pain, Things happen in our lives that add a tremendous amount of emotional pain. And sometimes it feels too much to bear. And sometimes it is too much to bear. But that's also the number one reason why I've started this channel. I've started this channel to be a community. Now, obviously, originally, if you've been around for a long time, you know that it was the new woodworker. I wanted to start a woodworking community. Then it became about my spinal fusion. Healing together is about this journey. And I figured, how else can I strengthen and support other people going through something similar or going through something very different? But we're still here for each other. And I'm here for you. And I know that many of you have reached out to me to let me know that you're here for me. And friends, this community, Healing Together, is how we are going to get through this. Because the more we can strengthen each other, even just answering each other's comments, and I'm so grateful to see each of you answering others' comments, because I can't always get to it now. The channel's growing so much, I also have the other channel, and so that takes away a lot of my time. Now, fortunately, the channels are monetized, so they are making me a little bit amount of money. But we will have merchandise coming out and we'll have other programs. I will also be offering paid consultations as many of you have requested. We're working on the website so that you can just go to the website, select the date, select the time duration that you'd like to speak for. Then you're going to select the subject that you would like to speak with me on. Now remember, I've been through a lot. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I have started and built many brands, service-based as well as product-based. I've also been through a host of things in my life, and I've been coaching, training, and mentoring many people in a host of topics for over 20 years. So all I want to do is help you figure out how you are going to get through this journey and move towards the future with hope, with strength, with confidence, with courage, and hopefully in less pain. So friends, that is the number one reason why I personally needed a spinal fusion. I hope that answers many of your questions. I know I've received so many inquiries about this topic, so I hope that gets you what you're looking for. Stay tuned, guys, because there's a lot of videos that I'm working on. We're going to be doing a lot more of these, the number one reason videos, because apparently they are highly watched on YouTube and everybody wants to know, hey, what's the main reason, blah, blah, blah. Now, I will also be doing a series of work at home after surgery. I'll also be doing a series on how I got into real estate, how I got into starting brands, how I started my businesses, how my companies were successful, how I started my first six-figure brand, how I started my first six-figure business, how I got into coaching, how I got into training, how I uh, overcame addiction, how I get overcame dependency, how I get through withdrawal, and yada, 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 yada. The list goes on and on and on. What I would love for you to do 
is send me a message in the comment section and I want you to share with me an idea for a video that I can make that will help you specifically as the number one reason that and you fill in the blank or the number one reason you fill in the blank and I'll make a video. All right, friends, I appreciate you watching this video. I'm thinking of you all. I love you all and I'm very grateful for your support. I'm extremely grateful, extremely grateful for each and every one of you watching these videos and helping the channel grow because we really are growing and I'm so grateful for that. Now you can find me on Instagram over at Coach Hard Gains, Hard Gains with a Z. That is my coaching platform. All right, friends, I'm praying for each of you and I'll see you in the next video.